Hey, it's Rod V here. Thanks for watching. Well, today I'm going to make a flipped super strat body out of some cedar. I've got some cedar plank here, uh, about three feet long. It's about an inch and a half, inch and five eighths thick. And um, what I'm going to do is, is I made one of these for a friend of mine, and he is a lefty, and I drew the pattern on my blank for a right hander. And I know it doesn't matter, but I wanted one specific side to be in the front. And when I flipped it, it looked pretty cool. So I decided I wanted to make one of those for myself. So I made my, my blank, and I took my pattern, and I drew it on there and flipped it. Okay, so this would actually be the bottom, and then you'd have the, the long point coming up top. So I flipped it, and I made this right here. That's what we're going to cut out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see how it turns out. I think it'll look really cool. And when I get done, I'm not going to do nothing to the cedar. I'm not going to, to put any oil on it. I'm not going to put any paint or nothing on it. I'm going to sand it to about a 3,000 grit, make it really, really smooth because it smells really good. All right, let's go ahead and cut this out. Alright, there it is. I'm going to put the pattern back on it and we route it out. Okay, the way I'm going to have to do this is I'm going to have to glue my, stick my pattern onto the body and start from the center line and just route out this side. Then I'm going to have to flip it, line them up again, and then route out that side. Then we'll take the pattern back off, flip it, and route the other side. Alright, now I got all that routed out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for my neck. I'm going to drill the holes for the string, then I'll pull it back off, and I will use this bit right here, flip it over, and I can use a bottom bearing bit, and I can get the other side, and then we can get to routing out the pockets. Okay, what I have is a bottom bearing bit. You can see it on there. I don't have to use my pattern. Uh, it'll go down there, and it'll use the bottom portion of the body to run it around and make it square. So let me get my mask on and we'll do that. All right, we got that routed out. Everything looks pretty good. I got a little bit of chip out right here on the corner. And I'm not really going to worry about it. That just means I'm going to make this my back side because you really can't see it from the front side. Here, you can only see it from the back side. So I'll sand that down as round, round it off as best I can, and I'll just make this my front side. Okay, I've only got that routed out to about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to go to an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up, come back, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, let's take a look. Man, I got cedar dust all over me. That looks pretty good. Got the neck pocket done. Everything's good and it's smooth. Man, this stuff smells real good. So, okay, I put my pattern back on here and I marked the line right here. This is where the contour for your arm is going to go. I'm just going to use a flapper disc and an angle grinder. There we go. It's not really all that deep. I don't want it all that deep. But I'll take a uh, DA sander, go over it, smooth it out, and then I can uh, contour it a little bit more, a little slower, because that flapper disc on the angle grinder will take it off just like that. So I'm going to flip this over and we'll get the belly in it. Okay, because I swapped the pattern over and flipped it to make both sides 
the short side like this, the belly cutout is not going to fit because remember I took this off. So I just kind of free handed a line on here. I'm not going to take it down deep. I'm just going to contour it a little bit and uh, go from there. So let's do that and see what it looks like. I think that looks pretty good for freehand. So I'll take and hit this with the DA, DA sander and smooth it out and then uh, tomorrow I can run the router bit around it and smooth out the edges. Okay, sorry if you can't hear me, I've got my mask on, but I'm going to take my DA sander, some 320 grit paper, and I'm going to try to smooth off the armrest that I uh, ground in there and try to just roll all this over and make it contour. Alright, I still got my bass on because the dust is flying in here, but that right there turned out pretty smooth. I got a good contour on it. It's really smooth. And I'll sand this thing down to about 3,000 grit and it'll be like glass. I'm going to do the same thing to the back side. I'm not going to uh, put that on camera, but I'm going to sand this whole back side the same way, smooth it out, and then tomorrow when I get my router bits, I can put my edge around it. Okay, i got to route one more hole or cavity in this body because I'm going to use active humbuckers or active pickups. And the last time I did one, I forgot about that, and I wound up cutting a hole right here putting a battery in it and covering it with the pit guard. Well the problem with that is whenever you need to change the battery you have to destring it, take the pit guard off and change it. So what I want to do is I want to put a 9 volt battery um, holder in the back. So what I did was, I don't know if you can see, is I took my pattern, flipped it over on the back and I traced out where the, the uh, pickup cavity and the control cavity is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this battery box right here that way I can run a wire into the cavity here and do that so I've got to make a template so I can route this hole in it set it down and screw it in okay what I did was I took a piece of a pattern that I had for a set neck pattern and I don't use that so I took and I cut a hole in it the same size as the battery holder and it fits right in I got my tape on the back of it I got my tape on my body. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and then we're going to route out the hole for the battery compartment. All right, I got the pattern on the body, tape and super glue, and the hole's got to be about an inch and a quarter deep. So I'm going to have to do that in several passes. Can't do it all at once. All right, I got my battery compartment cut out fits right in. My pattern did move on me a little bit right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I can tell it. What I think I might try to do is uh, I'm going to mix up some two-part epoxy, some 15-minute epoxy or five-minute epoxy rather, and I'm going to put some of my um, my cedar dust in it and mix it up and see if I can get that color and fill that little hole up. Um, I know it really doesn't matter, but it bothers me because it's not perfect. So uh, I'm going to do that and then uh, sand it up and go from there. Alright, I got my body all sanded down, about 2,000 grit, and the spot back here where the router got away from me a little bit or the pattern had moved and I mixed some cedar shavings in with the epoxy, um, it turned out pretty good. It's a little bit darker, but it matches this line right here with the grain, so that's going to hide it pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this cedar oil, and this is 100% cedar oil. It has no chemicals or anything in it. It was boiled from a red cedar tree. I'm going to wipe it down on this body, let it soak in, probably do it a couple times, keep it from drying out and cracking, um, it'll keep that cedar smell to it, and it'll darken up the wood a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now, let's see how it turns out. You can see my table is a mess. This cedar, when you sand on it, it goes everywhere. So I'm going to get my rag and wipe this down. Now, 
it doesn't really smell like cedar in it. I mean, really strong, um, and it's not supposed to take too much. This is supposed to do a couple hundred feet, or square feet rather. All right, look how dark it is now. That looks really good. I got one spot down here. I don't know if you can see it, right here. I can't sand that out. If I was kept on sanding, I'd have a divot in it, so we're going to call it character. But I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to do the back side, and I'm going to put about two coats of this on it and let it dry. And, I mean, that just looks awesome right there. So let me do all that, and we'll come back, and I'll show you what the whole thing looks like all oiled down. All right, I got the cedar oil on it. It looks really good. looks a whole lot better. It really pops that red that's in it. I went ahead and put the battery box in it put the screws in it, run my wires, um, but that cedar oil, it just, it's, it's amazing stuff. It really makes it look good. It's also going to keep the wood from cracking anymore. It's going to keep it moist because this spot right here um, that I showed you before, it's an actual crack. I can't sand it out so I'm going to put a divot in it. So uh, I'm just waiting on my neck and pickups to get here. As soon as they get here, I'm going to put it all together, come back, and I'll show you what it looks like, and we'll go see Michael again and have him play it see what it sounds like. I think it's going to sound real good. All right, it's done. It's put together. This thing is awesome. It came out almost perfect. It looks really, really good. Now, I started making guitars three months ago just to see if I could make one, and this is the best one yet. And if you notice, there is a cedar pit guard on it. Um, I wound up putting a tortoise, a red tortoise pit guard on it, and I didn't like it, so I figured I'd give it one more shot. This is with a third try, and I'm going to post another video on how I made this pit guard. So uh, stay tuned for that one. But we're going to go see another friend of mine named John Paul. He's going to play it for me. We're going to see how it sounds.